Hi everybody, part three. Okay, I'm just gonna jump right in. Uh, so I, in the last video, I told y'all that I um have untangled this uh, mystery of the you know the guys. Um, these guys. I mean, this stuff is just so encoded; it's not even funny. Um, basically, what this whole st this is saying in regards to these numbers is that you know this figure represents in some instances now we know that there's duality there's the good side and the bad side and in some instances this old man here is symbolic of the father our father who art in heaven and um, you know Holy Spirit led me to John 19 to the 192 which um, in the Strong's uh, 711 is purple. Of course, purple is referring to royalty. Or the king. So they're saying he's out. That's what these ads are, are, are portraying is that he's out and these two are in. Well, these two numbers is just another name, another code for the fallen one. Um, you know, this was in the Ghostbusters movie, and the 7-Eleven is 9-Eleven, we know, because of the seventh month and the ninth month, um, and it refers to, <laughs> I didn't even realize, because I, I was going to cover Re Revelation 9-11, and I didn't even realize, or I had forgotten, that I put these verses in here, because this is an, an image from a previous video. Uh, where I was incorporating the Wormwood aspect, which, um, just so y'all know, I'm sure you do know, that the, the rider on the pale horse, which is death and hell, is uh, a pale, the, in the Greek is the word, um, is it chloros, which means green, a pale green, so... One would, um, but let me go back to the numbers and then um, it. I just found something this morning which I think I had stumbled across previously, but it, it came to fruition. I have no doubt in my mind now that these numbers, these Strong's numbers and numbers that are being used, is a way to communicate. We know that math is the international, worldwide communication. In other words, numbers are the one language, you know, that because when you use numbers to show an equation, it's the same no matter where in the world. You know, it doesn't change from country to country with the different languages and the different cultures. Numbers stay the same. So the numbers are equivalent to what the one language was when they were building the Tower of Babel, which is why science relies on numbers, on calculations to figure out the mysteries of the universe because it's all in there. So I have no doubt that these numbers are speaking to us. No doubt in my mind. So let me show you what uh, the, this means. So, you know, after seeing those videos, which I've covered in previous videos of mine, the, the, the ad videos of the 118, 118. Now, because it just seems odd, um, you know, you, you dial 118 in the UK to get information. It's like here in the US, it's 411. And upon researching this, I, I assume it's that way now. I didn't go too far into researching it, but you could call the number, the 118 number, and ask any question. You know, not just like, uh, can you give me the number to the such and such restaurant? You could ask any question at all, and they would give you an answer. Kind of like a, you know, a live dictionary kind of thing. A live Google, a live World Wide Web internet in the mini aspect mm -hmm. 
I was, you know, upon watching the ads, I was like, why are there two 118s? What's up with the, you know, if it's just this number that you call, why are there two? So I kept writing them down and looking at them, and then it just came out. As I stated in last night's video, that in that one video where the two 118 guys are on the golf course, or they're at the country club, and on the country club building is um, the numbers 18 and then 80. And they're they're separated. That's not like a norm. First of all, a country club like this, and this is the UK, they're not going to have numbers up there like that. So these numbers, were, I'm sure, were put there. I don't know that for certain, but it seems like they were probably put there for the shooting of this ad. You know, this quote-unquote commercial. Um, we know 18, now there are good aspects of numbers, like I said, and bad. So we know 18 is 6 plus 6 plus 6. And 8 um, is a reference to Yeshua. Uh, when you turn the 8 on its side, it's the infinity symbol. Um, but then you know who copies that with the Ouroboros. In other words, claiming himself to be the infinite. He, and we know that that's just the counterfeit. So, so I, I, I saw the, um, you know, the 8 and the 80. When we do it backwards, it's 8 and 81. And then in the same video, it's confirmed that 81 is, it's shown again on this flag here where they shoot a hole in one. It's 81 forward, but 18 backwards. So, we know that, you know, the backwards is in reference to the mark of the beast, 6 plus 6 plus 6, and then the other way, it's 81. So, so whether you read it this way, this 8 and the 1 in the middle is either 81 or it's 18. And then, because they do things backwards, if you read it, and, you know, um, the backwards also, I just, <laughs> Holy Spirit, just drop this. When they, when we read something from left to right, and then it's backwards from right to left, the backwards is also the way Hebrew is read from right to left. So, this directly points to the Pharisees. You know, the, they were Hebrew, but they were children of the devil. So reading from right to left, if you leave the 18 in the middle, because this is the stand, this is personifying the entity of the 18, or the 6 plus 6 plus 6. So if you read it from right to left, you, you have 8 plus 1 is 9, and then you have 11. These numbers can go so many ways. As I show here, um, when you separate them, it's 11, 11, and then 88. 11, 11, and 88. Um, and I'm going to show you on the calendar what the strongest numbers for 11, 11 are. Because um, I don't even think I had looked it up yet. So, like I said, this is if you read from right to left. I mean, and you can add or you don't have to add. They The way they do the numbers, it's all up to, you know, as long as the numbers are in play, it doesn't matter whether they add them or they leave them standing. Like, you know, they, you could add the 8 and the 1 and get 9, but leave the 1 and 1 separately instead of adding them to get 2. So, okay, so I, I didn't put it in <laughs> the visual, but I just I had to stop and look up Strong's 92. So if you do want to add the 2, you know, add the 8 and the 1 and then the 2, for 9 and 2, I mean, um, it's, you guys, this stuff, it, I know I've said it a bunch of times, and, and Aaron from Exalted Limb 1 says it too, you cannot make this stuff up. It's not coincidence. It is the Lord God speaking to us. So, in the Hebrew, Strong's number 92 means a band. <laughs> and uh, band, bands, bunch, or vaulted dome. What do we have? Know, mosques or vaulted domes. Um, the number one definition is for in the plural, it's bands or thongs. Metaphor of fetters of slavery. <laughs> a band of men or um, 
sometimes a band of men is called a troop. Um, vault of the heavens, as fitted together or constructed. In other words, the dome that is over the earth, the firmament. And it also means a bunch of hyssop, which of course is what the Israelites used to put the blood of the lamb on the doorposts. So, it means an arch, a knot. So, you see guys, every these numbers have meanings, and the meanings pertain to everything we are watching right now, and everything we are looking at. So, oops, hang on, that was in the Hebrew. Let me see what it means in the Greek. In the Greek, it means a wrong or an injury. A legal wrong, a crime, a misdeed, crime against God, a sin. So, you see, the fallen one's crime against God was his rebellion. So, these numbers are just a synonym for him. And then you can separate it in this way to where it also can be 2019. 219 with the zero is just a placeholder. So, and then I looked up Strong's. I'm like, hey, wait a minute. I hadn't looked up Strong's, you know, 9 and 11. And it's unbelievable. In the Hebrew, Strong's number 9 and Strong's number 11 are the same thing. Number 9 is Abidah. And it comes, the root word is Abad, which is where you get the name Abaddon, which is Apollyon, which is the king of the, the angel of the bottomless pit. We know who that is. It's Hashatan. A lost thing, destruction, Hades. And it means the exact same thing. Number 9 and 11 mean the same thing. No coincidence and no surprise that they choose on the date what happened in 2001 in New York City that date was specifically chosen and in the Greek number nine is Ablene and it comes from uh, it, it says in the definition to compare it to Hebrew Abel and we know that Abel was of the good seed he was the good seed that was slain by his brother which is a type and shadow of Yeshua being slain by his brethren. Um, and then in the Greek, 11 means Abraham. And Abraham is a type and shadow of the Father. I just wanted to share that with you guys. And um, now let's look at the calendar. Okay, so I apologize for those last few minutes. Looking at the calendar, uh, we already went over these last night on Friday. Um, I want to remind everybody. I'm sh I know you already know, but you know this is a reminder to myself to get prayed up right now and 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 really ask the Lord to to cover us and our family against um, real witchcraft, curses and hexes and spells. The, there are real witches that are doing. You know these are their high days, and they will be putting those curses and hexes out there so especially if you have a channel um, just plead the blood over everything remember to put your armor on because uh, they're going to be coming at us even harder so pray for one another because we all need to help each other right now we are all one body and we need to lift each other up L let me just quickly say this day of the dead thing you know in the IPG2 video there is well, let me go there real quick um, this character is a common character in the Day of the Dead celebrations and of course there's the fireworks going off and you know I I was led to watch the animated movie Coco which is all about the Day of the Dead and I didn't you know I didn't watch it for entertainment and of course for those of you who've seen it, the good guy who you think is the good guy in the beginning ends up being the villain in the end. And the guy who you think is uh, a low life, in other words, uh, the way the Pharisees and other people thought about Jesus, he turns out to be the good guy. And the real 
father. So these these movies are not they they tell the story constantly in the movies of the Bible constantly for those with eyes to see. So anyway, in this video, right after this scene, he puts his hand on the girl's shoulder and she has the tiger on her back. And before it showed it, it zooms down and gets a close up of her waving the white flag, there is the yin yang symbol on the ground which disappears. She represents the tiger economies. I finally after doing a lot of research, figured out what the tiger was on her back. Um, the tiger economies, it, they're called the Asian tigers originally, and there are also Latin American tigers, and it's no coincidence that the Asian tigers, which are tiger economies, they are called, are Hong Kong, Taiwan, Singapore, and I didn't realize this, they are four Asian, also called four Asian dragons, or the four little dragons. In Chinese and Korean, only the dragon terms are used. Uh, these are the economies of Hong Kong, Singapore, South Korea. Okay, that was the other one, obviously. And Taiwan. And, of course, we know what's going on here. Um, we know that there's always a threat there because of their neighbor to the north. Uh, they're being threatened by China. Uh, you know, there's something going on in these these four. And then there's also the um, Latin American tigers, which, no surprise, um, in Chile was the first Latin American tiger. And it basically, a, a, a tiger economy is an economy that makes a, goes from being very poor to very rich very quickly. And um, in, in other words, their economies increase to where they're their GDP is high and they're doing well. So, Chile, no surprise, the first Latin American tiger. And they have Peru here. And we know right now they are, are also just like in Hong Kong and in Spain. Right now there are mass um, riots of the people against their governments, their tiger economy governments in Spain, in Hong Kong, in Chile, and specifically Santiago, Chile. Uh, also in Ecuador, I mean, it's happened, the, the people of the world are rising up against their governments right now. So, you know, the elites are noticing that people are, are, are rising up and they're not going to take all their corruption anymore lying down. So, they're going to have to do something to change the tide. And you know what that means. So, I mean, right now, Santiago, Chile, all the things that I was showing, you guys, these uprisings are happening in these countries first. They are a prelude to what is going to be coming to America, no doubt. And this was just out one day ago. Chile says, no chance of rights derailing APEC UN climate meet in Santiago. Oh, so I didn't even realize there was going to be a, a UN climate meet in Santiago. Okay. So, um, they are writing, so of course they have martial law, they have curfews, uh, right, please fight, uh, fire tear gas to disperse protests in Santiago, Chile, that was two days ago, so, you see, he, he's, he's so awesome the way he shows us things to, to prepare us for the, so when we do see them, just like his word says, I'm going to tell you now, so when it happens, you'll believe and, of course, he's saying, you know, get ready. When you see these things begin to occur, lift up your head and look up, because your redemption draws nigh. Now, the the Day of the Dead stuff that's portrayed in IPG2 in regards to tiger economies, and uh, does that mean it's going to happen on November 2nd, the Day of the Dead? I don't know. Could, but there's a reference here in this movie... And they distinctly, they do not show these numbers for no reason. Of course, reading it backwards is 723. Um, but reading it from left to right, it's uh, 327. And I was led to this. I just want to share it. This is definitely not coincidence. The 327th day of the year is November 23rd which is 923, which is date 
Emperor Augustus was born, who is a type of shadow of Antichrist. Um, <laughs> it, it, you see, guys, it just goes on and on. So, could it be this day that something will happen? I don't know, but just these days, these three days are high watch dates. Uh, November 21st to the 23rd, high watch dates. So, um, I have so much to cover, guys. I, I was looking at more of the strongest numbers to fill in in the calendar, and it's just amazing what they say. I would, I'd be like, let me look up this number, and I was like, are you kidding? I would just this big smile would come over my face. Because he's definitely speaking to us through these numbers. Um, these are our, our lamp on the path to keep us going forward. So for those who are new to my channel, I'm just gonna re I'm just kind of recapping some things, and then we're gonna go back to the calendar, and I I have to finish the 118 thing. Um, I volunteer somewhere, and they had a volunteer appreciation um, dinner, and they give away raffle prizes at these gatherings, and uh, everybody. <laughs> only the volunteers were allowed to win a prize because we could bring guests with us but only the volunteers were allowed to win the prize so pretty much everybody had won something from their raffle tickets and a lot of people several people volunteers their raffle numbers were drawn several times but you were only allowed to win one time one gift even though their numbers were drawn they couldn't get another gift because they had already won one so they got down to the last prize that they had to give away and only the people who had already won something's numbers were being drawn and none of my numbers had been drawn you got I think five raffle tickets I think or maybe it was ten might have been ten I don't remember anyway none of my numbers had been drawn and I was I was looking around and I was like the only volunteer that hadn't won a prize <laughs> I was like seriously so they decided to do it differently and so they asked a trivia question they asked what year the the organization was started and i knew the answer but i wasn't quick in getting it out because i had to sit there and think about it and someone sitting in front of me at the table in front of me like kind of they knew i hadn't won anything because they could hear me saying what i haven't won anything and so they told me the answer and so I yelled it out, and I ended up winning the prize. Well, the prize was a gift card to this restaurant. There are, are a couple of them here where I live, and I'd never been there before. So the point is, is it was, I was meant to win this. Nobody but me was meant to win this gift card to this restaurant. And I got pretty good food, too. They're kind of pricey, but they're pretty good. So, and <laughs> Look here, there's an... I just now noticed this. There's a bull here. An ox. This is the paleo pictogram for the uh, Hebrew first letter of the Aleph Bet, which is Aleph, which represents the father. Because the bull, the ox, is strong and... <laughs> Oh, it's just no, it, it can't, it's not coincidence. So anyway, he's so awesome the way he does this. So Santiago, and then, as I showed in previous videos, the the actor that played the the um, Elon Musk character on the TV series Salvation, who basically ended up being like the savior because he saved everybody from what was coming, although it ended with a cliffhanger because that's how they wanted it to end and his real name is Santiago Cabrera and <laughs> so then I was like okay I, I get the Santiago so what about bodega what does that mean obviously it's a Spanish this is a Spanish term so I'm like what does that mean and I was blown away but why what I was shown so the word bodega in Spanish means a storehouse for maturing wine I'm like what Although bodega initially meant a storehouse for wine, it now most commonly refers to a grocery store in an urban area. Okay, um, but initially it meant a storehouse for wine. The new wine is the bride. She's the new wine. She's the the wine at the wedding supper that was 
turned into wine from the water. It's just, it, I just love the way these analogies work. And then Matthew 13.30 says, Okay, I did it again. I plugged it in. I shouldn't have done that. So if you heard the humming, I'm sorry. I won't do it anymore, I promise. I, I will get me a new battery. That's next on my list of things to get. Matthew 13.30 says, Let both, this is about the tares. This is a parable of the tares. Parable of the tares, the weeds. Um, the, the husbandman, the, the, the householder, which is the master of the house, which is Yeshua, the father, he, he says, let both grow together, meaning the, the seeds, the good seed that was sown and the bad seed, let them both go together until the harvest. That's us. We are the seed. We are the good seed. And of course the tares are the bad seed, seed, the, uh, children of the devil. Let them grow together until the harvest, and in the time of the harvest I will say to the reapers, who are the angels, Gather ye together first the tares, and bind them in bundles to burn them. But gather the wheat, we are the wheat, into my barn, my storehouse. <laughs> so... Ah! Oh, he's so amazing, guys. So, um, I'm going to cut this one off here so that I can get into the calendar stuff, let the battery recharge, and um, not worry about trying to plug it in. So, I will see y'all in part four, I guess it is. They're going to keep coming because I want to keep show. I have, there's just so much. And the, the so much that I want to show you is, is encouragement. It's confirmation that he's speaking to us and he's telling us to hold on. Hold fast, he's coming. But he's got to come at the right time. And we're close, but it's not yet time. So he's saying, be patient. Those who have kept the patient patience of his word are the ones that he's going to snatch out of here. So um, I will see you in the next part. I love you guys so much. And I pray that you're having a blessed day or evening wherever you are. Oh, before I say goodbye... I just want to say this, all praise and glory and honor to the King of Kings and Lord of Lords, Yeshua HaMashiach, because without him revealing these things through his Holy Spirit, I would know nothing. This, All of this that I share with you all to encourage you is from him. It is not of me. So I'm just trying to be obedient to share with you all because I want to encourage you all and I want you all to, to stand strong and keep looking up that's the job that he's given me so that we're all ready to go when he comes okay so i will see you in the next video love you shalom